I'm Will, I'm here with Mike, we're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And in this video we're bringing you issue 74 of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Mortal Realms magazine. This issue came with three Vanguard Raptors and three Ether Wings models for the Stormcast Eternals. If you'd like to see these built and on the battlefield, you can do so using the timecode in the description or the chapter bars. But uh, if you want to have a look through the issue contents, we'll do that first. First up we learn about Vanguard Raptors. These are expert marksmen and trackers of the Stormcast Eternals Vanguard chambers. They work in small teams to disrupt the enemy and generally make a nuisance of themselves. They're part of the Jusker Justic Conclaves, like other ranged units. They have two principal ranged weapons, the Long Strike Crossbow, which is an excellent sniper weapon that can pass through armour, even or even heavy armour at long range, or the Hurricane Crossbows, which fire a huge number of smaller bolts to drive back the enemy. Then Aether Wings are some of the creatures of Azir that are often trained by the Vanguard Raptors to act as spotters and bodyguards. They can warn of approaching danger and also protect their masters, allowing them to continue to fire rather than be uh, attacked in melee. And there's, oh, there's a page, there's actually a little short story about a Vanguard Raptor from the Astral Templars Storm Host, who are themselves keen hunters. That's it for our lore, we're straight on to our build instructions. There's a bit about base sizes, because this issue comes with three different base sizes for the different kinds of models, we'll see that in a second. The kit does come with the options to build Vanguard Raptors with the Hurricane crossbow, but it only comes with the bases for the Long Strike crossbows. So you can build them with the other crossbows if you have the spare bases if you want to, I suppose, but the issue assumes you're going to build them with the Long Strike ones. So, as you can see, you've got the Raptor Prime there, who stands on a 40mm round base, but then the other two with the crossbows have the 60mm oval bases like that, so that's why they, the bases matter. And you have to be a little bit careful with the stand for the long strike crossbows as well, just to make it so that the crossbows don't look wonky when you're uh, attaching the arms to the body. And then the ether wings go on the 32mm round bases, which are supplied, so make sure you don't mix those up, but otherwise it's fairly straightforward to put together by the look of things. And there's the built models, and then painting them. Well, the Vanguard Raptors are just normal Stormcast at this point. We've seen all these techniques before, and it suggests painting the Aether Wings with different colour feather patterns, which you can vary between the models just for interest if you want to, but really, I mean, they're, they're beasts of the Realm of Heaven, so you can paint them whatever colours you want, really. Yeah, so there you go. There's a bit more there about feathers and how to paint them, and there's an example of painting there. And there's the Vanguard Raptors on the next page. So that's it for our issue contents. I'll hand you over to Mike now, where we'll have a look at their war scrolls. You see them in the game. Well, now we can have a look at the war scrolls for our two new units for this issue. So first up we have the Vanguard Raptors. They have similar stats to other Stormcasts with a 5 inch move, 2 wounds, 4 plus save and 7 bravery. These ones are armed with long strike crossbows. And so the long strike crossbows have 24 inch range with one shot, hits on 2, wounds on 3, minus 2 bends and 2 damage. And then in melee with their heavy stock, uh, they only have one attack, uh, hitting on 4s, wounded on 3s and 1 damage. And the Prime actually has a Aether Wing with him, so it gets its beak and claws attacks which also hits on fours and wound on threes, but it gets two of them. And then for their abilities, they have Headshot. If they roll an unmodified roll of six with ranged attacks with their long strike crossbows, they do two, two mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. And then Hunting Call. If an enemy unit finishes a charge move within an inch of a friendly unit that includes your Raptor Prime, uh, you roll a dice for each model in the Raptor Prime's unit and for each six plus, the charging unit suffers two mortal wounds, so they effectively stand and shoot with their crossbows. And then Long Strike just gives them an extra six inches of range for ranged attacks, as long as they didn't move in the movement phase of the same turn. And then the Eighth Wings, uh, sort of similar to Griff Hounds. They've got a 12 inch move, two wounds, six bravery but no save. And they have two attacks with their beaks and claws hitting on fours and wounding on threes doing one damage. Uh, they can fly obviously because we know they're birds. And they have two abilities, Watchful Guardians, which is at the start of the enemy charge phase. If a unit of Eighth Wings is wholly within 18 of a friendly Vanguard Raptors unit, then it can move up to 2d6 inches and must finish the move wholly within 18 inches of the same Vanguard Raptors. So they can effectively redeploy. And then the Swooping Hunters allow the unit to retreat and charge in the same turn. And then the little tutorial for those abilities, you can see Headshot and Hamzy Call are both fairly self-explanatory, and Watchful Guardians there, you can see the Aether Wings are moving to uh, get in Kuros Valentian's way so he can't charge the Vanguard Raptors. And here you can see the little short story bringing us into today's game, where a small force of Stormcast have fought their way through the night haunt lines and are within striking distance of the Forge of Rexar. You can see the unit choices we have. Well, so the Stormcast can now take Nave Black Talon, and they can take the Vanguard Raptors and Aetherwings as well. 
And our game for today is Linebreaker. Obviously this takes place on the Realm of Fire. And you can see the battle mat set out. We have all four, with the Night Haunt territory being six inches around uh, six inches away from three of the board edges and then the storm cast of a 12 inch by 12 inch box along the middle of the other long edge and uh, we set up four pieces of terrain as we like uh, the storm cast player begins deploying first and there's only one objective which is at the end of the fifth battle round whoever has the most units in the night haunt territory wins if they have the same number of units in the night haunt territory then whoever has the most units left on the table wins and we get three choices from the heroes list and five choices from the troops list each so we'll have a look at the armies we've picked set the board set up and get straight into the game so have a look at the stormcast army first so for my well three hero choices two of them are taken up by the lord arcan on griff charger and one will be the knight azeros and then for the units we've got two choices for the voctors on dracolines we've got the new vanguard raptors and their ether companions and a unit of two prosecutors none of these units are particularly tough but they are all fast well apart from the vanguard raptors but i just brought them because they're new so we're going for speed rather than uh, resilience in this game my general will be the Lord Arcanum. He'll have the Strategic Genius command trait for an extra command point. And I will give the Knight Azeros. Yeah, he'll have the Quicksilver Potion for this game, which allows him to strike first in a combat phase. So here's the Knight Hall army I've picked. I once again have a Shroud Guard Battalion with the, the Knight of Shrouds and two units of Bladegeist. Um, my other three units are a unit of Spirit Host, a unit of Hex Race, and a unit of Dreadside Harridans. And for my other two heroes, I have the Guardian of Souls, and I've decided to bring the Briar Queen because it's been a very long time since we've seen her, and I'm a bit bored of sa taking the same three heroes every time. I'll make the Knight of Shrouds my general, and he'll have Mastery of the Black Arts as his command trait. And I've got two artifacts of power to hand out, so I'll give the Guardian of Souls, the Cloak of Mists and Shadows, and the Knight of Shrouds, the Black Amulet. And also won the previous game and rolled for a triumph, and I got the one that lets you re-roll saves once per game. We finished deploying, I'll do a quick overview of the battlefield first. Uh, sort of in the bottom left we have a inspiring Azerite ruin. Uh, near the Stormcast deployment zone there you can see a Sigmar statue which is arcane. And over on the right we have the Time War ruins in the top right, which are always deadly, and the mausoleum in the bottom right. And everything's volcanic as well since we're on the Realm of Fire. I'll go over my deployment first. I just decided to clump all my units together I think. I think splitting up we could end up being defeated in detail so I have one unit of Blade Geist with the Spirit Hosts and the Harridans forming my front line, and then my three heroes behind them, and another unit of Blade Geist as reserves. And on my right flank, I have the Hex Wraiths, you know, just because they have a bit more speed. See if any of these Stormcasts try to go in the uh, top right corner. And then for my deployment, I've come as far forward as I can in my 12 inch box, and those units are basically on the edge of it as well. We've got the Vanguard Raptors in the front and centre because they're obviously the slowest part of my army. The Prosecutors on the right, the Dracolines on the left, the Etherlings are just behind the Vanguard Raptors, and my two characters on the right as well. So we're running off the first battle round, and we both start with a command point as well. I've got a Warscar Battalion, and uh, the Stormcast have a Strategic Genius. And rolling off. I want the roll off. So I think I'll make the Stormcast go first. I think I want to see where they go before I commit to a direction. And uh, only the Vanguards are going to be in range. Raptors are going to be only the Vanguard Raptors will be in range if they don't move. So we'll head into Stormcast turn one. Spellcasting then. We'll try and do empower with the Evocators. Raid fail with five. Then you need a six. And the uh, Lord Arcana will just try and do Mystic Shield because there's nothing else he can do at this time. On a six as well. That's a nine. Yeah, I'm out of range to deny, so that Mystic Shield is successful. Well, I, Mystic Shield went on the Prosecutors. They've moved out the front just to get their hammers in range, just on the extreme edge of it. The two heroes are behind them for a bit of protection, and the Draclings uh, next to them. And then the Eatherwings just hopped over the Vanguard Raptors, who have stayed still, so they get their extra range when shooting. So then we're on to the shooting phase. The Prosecutors will throw some hammers at the unit of Blade Geists on the left of your screen. Two shots each, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Doing all right. Yeah, that's four hits. Wounding on fours. Oh, two wounds. Two four plus saves. Failed both. Ignoring damage on fives. Nope. Two dead blade guys. Just take away these two on the end. And then the Vanguard Raptors will shoot them as well. They're not in range of the heroes, which is our ideal target. So we'll go see if we can finish the unit off. Three shots hit on twos. I've got a miss. <laughs> two twos. Wounding on threes. Six does two mortal wounds instead. And two normal wounds. Two four plus saves. Fail both again, not using those dice anymore. These are two damage each, so ignoring damage on fives. I only ignored once, the unit is destroyed. Uh, but that's the end of my turn. Then we'll be on to Nighthawk turn one. So my hero phase again a command point, and then the Briar Queen is going to try and cast Howling Vortex, which is her signature spell, needing a seven. 
We're only getting a three, so that's a fail. No, uh, the Guardian is nothing's in range of fireball, so I think the Guardian of Souls will try and cast Mystic Shield. Need a five, getting a seven. Try and unbind with, doesn't matter which really, more than that, or oh, twelve. Well, for my movement, everyone in the middle just sort of moved up as a general advance. So the spirit hosts and the harridans going out in the front. The blade guys hanging back a bit. Hopefully, so they didn't get exploded by a spirit flask. And all my heroes are following up behind. Not sure how to just moving so he's behind the blade guys. Over on the right, the hex trace ran, so they can fly over the mausoleum. They are possibly in range to be charged by the evocators and dragolines, but uh, that would at least split them off from the stormcast. And I'm not going to declare any charges. And uh, the Briar Queen's out of range of her scream attack as well, so that's the end of my turn. And we're rolling off for battle round two. Oh, well, I will choose to go first. So we're into Stormcast turn two. So another command point, and then on to spells. Empower first of all on six, getting a six. Try and unbind with the. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, but the Knight of Shadows, I suppose. He unbinds it with a ten. And uh, the Lord Arcanum will do an Arcane Bolt, I suppose. On a five. Oh, a double one. Also in my command phase, I used Blazing Fervor for a command point on the Draclines, giving them an extra inch of charge. And then they've moved over. We're going to have a go at those Hex Wraiths, I think. And everything else is just given ground, still in range to shoot. So then we're on to the shooting phase, uh, where the Prosecutors are just in range of those Harrigans. Four shots on fours, we're rolling ones. Oh, okay, mm. three, two. Reroll that one. No, no hits at all. And the Vanguard Raptors will shoot the Harrigans as well. Three shots on twos. No, two misses. Oh, and two mortal wounds. Yeah, so that was two mortal wounds on the six to hit, not on wounds, as I said in the previous turn. So, yeah, Harrodons are within range of here, so ignoring damage on sixes. Nope. Uh, and we'll go for these two. And then the Draclings will declare a charge. They get plus one to this because of Blazing Fervor, and they can reroll because of their Draclings. Oh, they've got a, an eight, effectively, so that's enough. Charging in like that, and then I'll pick them to fight. And then they pile in a bit, and then they have nine attacks with their swords and staves, hitting on threes. On the box. That's only one miss, so it's eight hits. Wounding on threes. Uh, five wounds. Now I think I'm going to use my triumph here to have re-rollable saves. So four plus re-rolling. Made two so far. Re-roll, made them all. And then six attacks from their mounts, hitting on threes. Three. Wounding on threes. Oh, just one. Four plus. Rerolling. Into a success. And finally there, Celestial Lightning Arc with four dice. Four pluses do mortal wounds. I've got four mortal wounds. Well, hey, that makes up for it, I guess. That's two dead hex face. Uh, I took away the two hex face that were on the far right, and then the rest of them will fight back. Seven attacks from the hex face with their scythes, hitting on fours and sixes do mortal wounds. Well, that's one mortal wound and five hits. And wounding on threes, getting four at minus one. So four plus saves. Failed three, so that's four damage so far. Should have actually been five pluses, but they rolled a six, so it doesn't matter. And then the attack from horses. Uh, six attacks hitting on fours. Horses get five hits as well. And wounding on fives, getting one. And four plus save. I've made that. So the regular one is down to one wound. But that'll be it for Stormcast turn two. On to Nighthawk turn two. So I gain a command point, going up to three now. Going to start spell casting with the... I'll do the Briar Queen, I suppose. She'll try and cast Howling Vortex. Again, needing a seven. Oh, she hits it with a 12. Can't unbuy that if no one wants to. Well, um, there's only one thing she can actually hit with it, and that's the Lord Arcanum. Who's moved 12, so I need to roll a double to do a Mortal Wound. Then the Guardian of Souls will try Spectral Lure. Gets it with a 10. May as well try and unbind with the Lord Arcanum. Nope. So I'll put that on the Harridans, bringing back D6. Just one. And also the... Knight of Shards will try and cast Mystic Shield. Gets it with a 9. Well, I've got another Unbind from the Evoctors, so I'm a 10. No. So my movement phase, again in the middle, is more of a just a general advance. Not being too hasty here. Uh, the Blade Guys, the Spirit Host, and the three heroes moving up. The Harridans are going to move forwards, however. And I put Mystic Shield on them and Blazing Fervor on them. See if they can go and deal with those Evoctors. And the Hex Race are actually going to fly. They're going to, going to retreat from the Evocators, getting more towards the middle of the board, and they'll fly over the Evocators to try and bomb them, see if I can take that uh, one off the end. So, a chance of a mortal wound on a 5+, plus. they take a mortal wound. That kills the injured one. Leaving just the Prime. Well, I haven't got any shooting, Briar Queen's out of range again, so in the charge phase, the Harridans will try to charge. Getting plus 1 to this roll. 12. <laughs> they get a 12, so they can go 13, 
There's a slight change of plans for that huge role the Harridans can actually reach the prosecutors, and I think they're much more annoying than the Evocator, so they're going to go after them instead. And I've charged them like that so that they don't bring in the Knight Azeroth just yet, so that he can't use his Quicksilver Potion to fight them first. So I could charge the Blade Guys in as well, but I'm uh, actually going to decide against that because the uh, Vocator will get to strike them first, and that's, they'll be out of range of the Knight Shrouds. So at the start of the combat phase, I'm just going to pick the Harridans to go. Now the Harridans are actually all just about hardy with an 18 of the Knight Shroud, so I'll spend another command point to give them Lord of Geist because I want them to wipe out the Prosecutors. So after much finagling, the Harridans manage to pile in so they can all get within an inch of the Prosecutors and stay three inches away from the Lord Arcanum and an inch away from any of the runes. So I will bring the Knight Azeroth in, but I really want those Prosecutors to die because they're going to be very annoying. So it's 17 attacks in total from the Harridans, hitting on fours. So that's 10 hits. Wounding on threes, and sixes do two damage. Well, there's three ordinary hits and three sixes. I should do the sixes first, because they'll kill them outright, so five plus saves. Made one, so that will be enough to kill them, so we'll keep one on one wound, thanks to um, Cycle of the Storm, and then we've got three normal saves that I have to make all of. No, they're all good. The Knight Azeroth will be, try, can try to get vengeance for them. He'll pile in just a tiny bit to get in range. He has four attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, because of himself, good thing. Uh, four hits. Winning on threes, on four wounds. Mm. Four, four plus saves. I made one, so just the Slasher Crane lives. I uh, rolled a one there as well, so I'll re-roll it. Into one, so never mind. But that will be it for my turn. And the end of battle round two. Rolling off to battle round three. Oh, I won, so I'll go first. So we're into Stormcast turn three. So I gain another command point, and then we'll try and do an Arcane Bolt. Needing a five. We get it with a six. Try and unbind with a Briar Queen, I guess. Needing a 7. Yep, yeah, unbind with an 11. So, given that's the case, I'm going to use the uh, Knight Azeroth's Lantern to, auto to inflict D3 mortal wounds to the Harrod, which has only got one, so we'll just kill her off. And then in the movement phase, we've split the army in half, so the Vanguard Raptors' Neath Wings will continue moving uh, this way, and the Lord Arcanum has joined them. And over on the other side, the remaining Evocator has run away. He ran to do so, and then the Knight Azeroth ran to join him. And then in the shooting phase, the Vanguard Raptors are going to shoot at the Briar Queen. Three shots on twos. Sorry, yes, threes, because it's Lookout Sir, so that six is two mortal wounds. And then we've got two normal wounds, which one wound? So four plus save for the normal one. New. Four damage in total, ignore it on sixes. Didn't ignore any, it's down to one wound. But that's it for my turn. So we're on to Night Haunt turn three. Go up to three command points and start spell casting with the Briar Queen, who's going to try and cast Howling Vortex, needing a seven. Nope, fails with a five. Guardian of Souls will try and cast Spectral Law, needing a six. Fails with a three. Knight of Shrouds will try and cast Mystic Shield. Fails with a three. Well, this is a very boring strategy, but I do think that uh, I think this is going to make for a very boring game, sadly. But I do think my optimal strategy is to actually fall back into my deployment zone now, because if I try to chase after those Vanguard Raptors, I think I'm just going to get whittled down by them, because they seem to be doing quite a lot of damage, and the Evocator and the Knight Azeroth are quite far away from my army to actually try and catch them, so falling back may prove to be the best choice. And uh, the only th other thing that's going to happen in my turn is the Guardian of Souls is going to use his free move from Cloak of Mist and Shadows, just to get himself behind the blade guys there. But that's going to be it for my turn. So we're rolling off for battle round four. One again, so I'll go first. So we're into Stormcast turn four. Well, we might as well try and cast Mystic Shield with a six. And failed. Movement phase so far, I spent a command point to give the Vanguard Raptors a maximum run, because they're going to need it to get into the Nighthawk deployment zone. I haven't moved the Aetherwings yet, but the uh, Lord Arcanum's going to ride the Winds Etheric. He's going to move directly towards the Briar Queen, and we're doing, we roll six d6. That's... 21, I think. No, he didn't go the full distance, but gets himself into the middle of the board because uh, basically I need to destroy some Night Haunts. And the Aether Wings ran and moved up a little bit to join him just in case they can be useful. And over here, actually, in the command phase, I spent two command points to give both of them blazing further, plus one charge, and then they've moved up. And we're going to try and charge the Hex Race. I'll roll the uh, Dracoline first. He needs a 7 with the, with the extra plus one. Well, it gets a 12. And the Knight Azeroth. Rolls an 11 as well, so I think he's in. Well, 11 is enough to get them both in over there, so um, they are going to do that. And then I will, at the start of the fight phase, use the Knight Azeroth's Quicksilver Potion, allowing him to fight at the start of the phase rather than later. So four attacks hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Three hits. Winning on threes, two. 
four plus saves, kill both, and then we'll just do the um, Dracoline. Five attacks normal. We've only got two hits, but we can reroll these ones because they're near the Night Azeroth. So that's three. We're only on three. So that, yeah, sorry, that, that was a three. Yeah, yeah. two wound. Uh, sorry, one wound. Four plus save. Now the Dracoline. Threes. Mm, one. Three. That's a wound. Four plus. Phew. And then the Lightning Arc. Fours. One more wound. I'll take away this Hex Wraith. And the other normal guy will take a wound. And they will go for the Evocator. So, five side attacks. Hitting on four sixes. Do mortal wounds. There's a mortal wound and a hit. Normal hit wounds on a three. New. Four attacks from the horses on fours. Two hits. Wound on fives. One wound. Four plus. Made it. So just one wound. And that is it for Stormcast turn four. On to Nighthawk turn four. Now first up in my hero phase, I'm going to use the Black Amulet from the Knight of Shrouds to do four mortal wounds to the Evocator Prime, which will kill him. Now for spell casting, the Briar Queen will try and do Howling Vortex again, needing a seven. She gets it with a ten. I won't try and unbind that. Okay, so I'm going to put it so that it hits the Lord Arcanum and the Aether Wings. So on a double, they'll take a mortal wound and have their movement halved. So I'll do the Lord Arcanum first. That's not a double. And the Ether Wings, that's not a double. I'll do Spectral Lure next from the Guardian of Souls. Hitting a six, gets it with a <laughs> fails with a three. And the Nut of Shrouds will do Arcane Bolt. Hitting a five, getting an eight. I think the Lord Arcana is in range to unbind, which he failed. So he'll do a mortal wound to the Knight Azeroth. I'll start down here in the bottom left for my movement. The Spirit Host moved across. And ran so that they could block off the Lord Arcanum from the Briar Queen, who also ran. I spent a command point to make her roll a six. The Knight of Shrouds and the Blade Geist are coming around the Mausoleum to try and attack the Knight Azeroth with the Guardian of Souls falling behind. And the Hex Race fell back, from, well, retreated from the Knight Azeroth, flying home over him as they did. Um, also staying in my performance zone. Potential for mortal wounds on fives. There's another mortal wound to the Knight Azeroth. No shooting, so in the charge phase, the Knight of Shrouds will charge the Knight Azeroth. He gets an 11, that's easy enough. And the Blade Geist will charge as well. Getting a 10, that's going to be enough as well. The Blade Geist and the Knight of Shards both get into Knight Azeroth. And in the combat phase, uh, I'll spend two command points to put Lord of Geist on both of those units. And also the Guardian of Souls is going to use his Cloak of Mist and Shadows just to go across like that, so that he can uh, project his aura to both those units as well. And I will actually pick the Blade Geist to go first. So the Blade Geist will pile in a smidge so that they can all get in range. They can all, and they have 20 attacks because they get an extra one for charging and an extra one for Lord of Geist. And these hit on threes. So it's only 11 hits. And these wound on twos thanks to the Guardian of Stars. Well, three ones, so that's eight wounds. Eight four plus saves. Oh, and he failed two. He's still alive at the moment. <laughs> well, he gets to fight back now. Well, he has four attacks back. We're going to attack the Blade Geist, even though it's probably going to cost him his life because um, he can't kill either of the two units. He only hit twice. Wounds on threes, so he did. Four plus saves. Made one, third one. Ignoring damage on a five. New. I'll take away this one, because that one's closest to the Lord Arcanum. And then the Knight of Shrouds will attack. Five sword attacks from the Knight of Shrouds. Hitting on threes. He gets three. Wounding on twos. They all wound. It's minus one rend. Got to make all the five pluses. Four pluses. Oh, four pluses. No, I didn't though. Like. And that's enough to kill the Knight Azeroth. And that is it for my turn and the end of battle round four. Yeah, and at that point I'm going to call the game because I only have three units left and even if I get them all into the Nighthaunt deployment zone, uh, the Nighthaunt have... Um, I've got six. Six units remaining, so I have to kill three units to even potentially get a draw. So yeah, and, um, that's not going to happen because they're all a really long way away. Yeah, it'll be really hard. The easiest one is the Briar Queen. She's Yeah, it's too hard to get to her. So that'll be a Nighthaunt victory. Recap that game for you now. So that was the game for issue 74 of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Mortal Realms magazine. How did you think that went? Well, obviously, we can see how it went. I don't really know what I was supposed to do differently. I mean, well, let's start with the obvious thing. I picked an army that was fast, not very resilient, and didn't have very many units. So I was always going to have to kill a few of your units. But I was kind of hoping that I could use my speed to pick my engagements and use the Vanguard Raptors to do damage at range and this kind of thing. The same with the Prosecutors. The alternative was to take a big block of infantry, like sequitors and whatnot. But then the problem with those is they're so slow, I basically have to commit to a direction to go. 
and fight my way into your deployment zone and you could still have as many units as me and you could essentially just sort of run away and do a bit of damage here and there. Yeah, I, well, I think that plan was working. First two turns, your Vanguard Raptors did a pretty decent amount of damage. You killed a unit of Blade Geists. Yeah. I, but the, it was at the point where I was like, well, I might as well just fall back and sit in my deployment zone because I have more units than you. Yeah. It does, I think that's an issue with this scenario, really. I, it probably would make more sense if, I don't know, I got a victory point for each unit I killed and you got two for each one in my deployment zone. So then now I actually have to come and get you. Yeah, I'm not saying my game plan would not have worked. It was working, as you said. I think also the turn before you started running away again, I had the choice to try and charge, you know, the Lord Arcanum, well, sorry, both my characters and that remaining Evocator into those Hex Wraiths and try and get rid of those. It would have left me open to a counterattack from, you know, Blade Geists and things, but maybe that would have been a better choice because what happened after that was you just ran away and then I lost my ability to really compete, you know, contest really? the game. Um, and that said, if I had gotten a double turn, I think I would have actually gone full on try and wipe you out. Yeah, although I don't think making you go first was a bad choice, because I think if I hadn't... Well, I probably would have gone down the middle anyway, but then I would have been in range of spells and shooting more, so I wanted you to pick a direction first. Yeah, and the problem was, because I had to destroy units, I couldn't just run away from you all the time. Yeah, and also it's worth bearing in mind that as the Nighthorn, I can technically take the Spirit House as three individual units which actually gives me more units than the Stormcast could possibly have. And I could just spread out and uh, you have to come and fight them all down. What I, I, I kind of feel like whatever army I picked, you had something you could do about it. I think this was still... I still think this was my best choice in terms of army. Shooting wouldn't have really achieved very much because you just stayed away. And uh, yeah, again, melee would not really have been an option either. Although I did make a really long... I made a 13-inch charge thanks to Blazing Furthers, which got rid of the prosecutors, which I think was important because they were going to be very annoying to get rid of otherwise. That is true, but I suppose the downside, the if you hadn't made quite such a long charge, you would have just destroyed the Evocator Prime instead, so probably wouldn't have made a great deal of difference in the end. Yeah, and I think this also shows that possibly why you don't usually take your faster units in normal objective games, because you don't have very many models there. And luckily this objective was based on units, not models. But if this was a standard objective game, if it was based on number of models, you would have had, wouldn't have had a hope with this army. Oh, it would have been useless. And I did. it's worth pointing out, I did take two sets of, uh, or two units that can are just two choices as well so I was shortchanging myself out of the total number of units the problem was I didn't actually have that many more fast ones uh, you're probably making it more balanced as well to consider that the um, since they take two they, is to have the two unit choice choices count as two units in your deployment zone I suppose you could also do it that way it doesn't say that in the scenario but if I were to rewrite it I would write that in as well that would actually make a lot more sense and it would have meant I would have had I probably would have kept my um, Lord Arcanum and the Evocators together then and used them as a unit. I'd obviously have to make sure they didn't get killed, but they're also my most powerful units. And I think it's a weird scenario to shove the Vanguard Raptors as well. It seems more like a unit you want to set up somewhere and snipe at things. And they did do that fairly well. I think they're pretty good at shooting at characters. I mean, the Briar Queen almost got taken down with one volley. And they're probably about as good, maybe even a little bit better than the Judicators, I think, because they're hitting on twos and they do two damage. So there's actually quite a bit of a threat to things like Hex Race. On Spirit Hosts, or taking out multiple Blade guys in one go. Certainly they're my uh, longest range unit as well, apart from the Ballista. 24 inches, even if they move, is pretty good range, and if it weren't for a strange scenario like this one again, they would be a, a great fire support option. Yeah, and they have that uh, Overwatch thing effectively as well, which again could take out a Hex Wraith on the way in. Yeah, it means that charging them is not a foregone conclusion. Obviously in melee they're just normal 2 wing Stormcasters, they're not going to last too long, but their long range means they can hopefully stay away. Aether Wings though, I think that you did a good job of keeping them out of range, because I think if they got into melee with anything they would have died very quickly. Yeah, they don't really do very much damage, they're very fragile. I w all I could do with them really was just use them as a fast unit that could be in your deployment zone. Staying, Keeping them with the Vanyard Raptors meant if you did decide to send off the hex rates after them or something I guess they could get in the way and be a yeah, speed bump. I mean they are very they certainly were very cheap not sure how much they cost in third edition but they're only about 50 points in second edition so they are very cheap and if you have your Vanguard Raptors amongst other things, then they are quite a handy little screening unit. It's not very clear whether they, with their special move, they can get into engagement range in something and stop it charging. I think that would actually be quite a good use for them because they, yes. they'll they'll die, but that stops a unit charging. Yeah, and it stops, and it stops a unit that's worth about three times as much as them yeah. dying as well potentially. So well, there's much more to say about this game on this issue. So as always, if you like this content, do leave a like and subscribe and leave any comments. Um, but if you played this game, how it went for you, or if you'd have done everything anything different, or what you think of the Vanguard Raptors and Eighth Wings and so on, be with the Table Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.